So here's kind of a little bit of a talk um, about uh, my experience as a Sumo Logic customer, um, having gone through this multiple times with multiple companies, um, both on Elk and Sumo Logic type uh, or uh, Splunk type setups, and uh, how, how, what's that journey look like uh, when you want to go back and uh, actually do this? So. Uh, my name is Ben. I am the supreme unicorn hunter of planet Earth and the entire galaxy besides. Uh, if you want to hear more about that, uh, come see me afterwards. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm basically a hobbit in a hole, right? I'm an engineer sitting there and, uh, you know, working on all my cool, really hacker things and all that, you know, and, uh, you know, let's just go through this journey a little bit. Let me take you through it. So who am I? Um, I am uh, Ben Abrams on Slack and GitHub, Major Moses. Uh, I'm a systems engineer uh, who leads the infrastructure security team. Uh, I was kind of asked a couple quarters ago to uh, build that team because it really didn't exist. Uh, so that's, that's fun. Um, and I gave a little talk the other day about that. Um, so you know, what, what is Doximity, right? We're a medical social network that help empower over a million doctors and medical professionals um, to more, you know, communicate with each other in much better ways than they were doing previously, like faxes and, you know, all that kind of stuff, providing secure HIPAA communication, connecting them to each other, um, and, uh, you know, really just trying to make their lives easier. Um, so I am an elk migration survivor, uh, and this is a repeat offense, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Um, so, you know, I've worked as a design partner with Sumo multiple times, working on unified logs and metrics, content sharing, uh, RBAC, new UI, UX. New should probably be in quotes because that was like three years ago. So uh, you, you probably all think that's not new. Uh, but it sucked beforehand, so it's better now. Um, and so I also maintain the Chef Cookbooks, and uh, I've done a couple of different events uh, with them. So why are we here, right? Um, we're on a quest to make logging not suck, right? Um, so, you know, you need smart people working on this, right? Unfortunately, that means I'm not allowed to be here. Um, but let's talk about why did we get here, right? You know, logging sucked, so why did it suck, right? You know, why are we looking for alternatives, right? Um, so I kind of want to compare and contrast just a little bit of two di entirely different companies um, different scale, different size, different culture, all those kinds of things, right? And while, yeah, there are some slight differences between them, uh, we see a lot of very similar, um, you know, uh, issues between them, right? It typically comes down to things like lack of confidence in the solution, uh, how costly are your outages, um, and that doesn't necessarily mean a dollar amount, right? It means loss of productivity, loss of, you know, uh, auditability, you know, in that moment when your auditor comes by and you're like, cool, let me just show you, pop open my logs, oops, my logging cluster is down and uh, now my audit takes four months longer because now they start scrutinizing everything. Um, so just, you know, kind of talking a little bit about some of that and, uh, you know, making things a little bit more secure. Um, so I just kind of wanted to talk about, this is probably a pretty common uh, you know, architecture for people who are using uh, Elasticsearch or something like that. You know, we've got all of these things coming in via uh, beats, you know, typically file beats, but there are other kinds of beats we had. Uh, have to have, you know, everyone needs the Kafka messaging queue because, you know, reasons, right? Um, then we have to have Elasticsearch, uh, you know, log stash indexers running on ECS clusters that are auto scaling. Um, then we have to have our actual Elasticsearch clusters that, again, have to be kind of some sort of auto-scaling uh, with some minim you know, minimal things. Then we've got to worry about disaster recovery and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, not the most complex thing in the world, but it's complex enough that um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's really important for me to focus on um, what, what is important to the business. It's really about extracting value, right? These logs. Our own, and, and metrics and data, whatever you're sending to Sumo, right? Um, you know, apparently. Uh, so yeah, just kind of talking a little bit about what do we get for free with Sumo Logic when we kind of sign up? You know, all of those kinds of things. Just showing you, uh, hey, you know, there's a better way of doing this. 
Um, so let's talk about some tips and tricks that I've kind of learned uh, through this uh, process multiple times. Um, so uh, I like to start with naming conventions. Um, it's really important that you have some kind of naming convention, even if you have different parts of the organizations with different naming conventions, document them or they won't be followed. Um, also, definitely you want to set up uh, searching and alerting to find people who are not conforming to your naming conventions so that you can go have talks with them and say, please fix that. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, we have so much data coming in all the time from all these different sources. Um, and it, you know, it, if you don't have these kinds of things in place, right, it's going to be, where is it? What, what, how do we find these things? Um, and, and this really comes into play also beyond that of just, you know, um, you know, trying to understand what are your retention needs? What are your, perform your query performance needs? Um, your, your naming conventions and, all, and such can very drastically impact how you do that. And I really recommend that you start with how are people searching your data? How are people using your data? How is it important? Um, and so, you know, you can't talk about data without metadata, which is just data about data. Yeah, yo dog. Um, you know, some of this may be a little bit less important with Christian's announcement of like everything auto magic, metadata, all the things, but um, realistically, um, you know, I haven't looked at that, so I can't speak to that, but what is important about that metadata, whether it comes automatically or it comes as a conscious decision of you as an engineer, um, is who, what, where, when is should be included in your message. If not, you're doing logging wrong. Um, and really, as part of this metadata, you need to start thinking about things beyond, you know, who, what, where, right? Um, you also need to think about who's accessing this data, right? Some bits of data are more sensitive than others, right? Um, so I work in a, a space of HIPAA compliance, right? Um, so certain bits of data, even though we are doing everything that we can to redact everything sensitive before we send it to Sumo, the reality is is that, you know, um, you know, stuff occasionally does leak into Sumo, and we need to be very careful about who can access that data. Um, you could also, uh, you know, even if you're not in medical or HIPAA or whatnot, you've got other kinds of data restrictions. Maybe, um, you know, maybe you don't want your HR systems or whatnot that are feeding into Sumo Logic. Uh, you don't want to let everyone know that hey, they're being let go next week. You know, uh, being able to have that kind of thought process when you build that in, when you have your naming conventions that you take account of those kinds of things uh, before you actually jump into it. Um, so again, I kind of mentioned before, uh, what's really important to me is extracting the value, right? It's not about, oh cool, I have a logging vendor and that's it, right? Um, you know, I ship all my stuff, call it good, you know, all right, I can walk away now, right? Um, sh shipping to logs is important, but it's, um, you know, it, it, so what, right? Anyone can ship logs. Is that useful, right? Well, it's only useful if you can extract value from it, right? So I want to talk about a couple of things here um, to help you uh, understand kind of some of the things around um, how to extract value from your logs, right? We have all of this data coming in all the time, and realistically, a portion of that data is what's actionable, right? A portion of that data is really important. Um, and so being able to th use things like processing rules to either uh, include only specific types of messages that are important to you or excluding other types of messages that are not important, right? So uh, take, for example, maybe you have a health check coming from a load balancer and uh, it's, it's only important for you to know about failures, right? It's not important for you to know that it was a su successful health check because that's, that's kind of its design, right? We, would, we, have other, we have other key metrics that'll tell us if, the, if this is failing, right? Um, also, another really interesting topic um, is around, you know, a lot of what we send to Sumo uh, can be structured or it cannot be structured, right? And so when you have these very highly structured logs already um, and then you try to put it in, in, you know, in a format like JSON or, some, or key, key, key value store, 
um, what you end up doing is creating a lot of extra data that you're sending to SumoLogic, right? So in our case, um, about 25% of our entire log volume outside of the data team is uh, Nginx logs. And so uh, we looked at it, and it's a very static pattern, but for some reason, uh, so, you know, it was decided that those should be in JSON format. So, um, which is nice and cool because, again, you can use the JSON auto or whatnot to just automatically parse out all the fields, right? Um, but what if there's a better way to do that, right? What if we could say, okay, well, we have this very static format of what's being sent to us. We know exactly what it's supposed to be. So why don't we just use uh, field extraction rules and change the data itself so that it's not sending JSON anymore. We, inf we, um, we can inflate all of those keys to the appropriate values um, uh, you know, uh, via field extraction rules. And by doing that, because of the way that Sumo Logic uh, counts your data, it looks at the raw field. Um, we, we, we've estimated that once we finish this, uh, uh, this process, uh, we're going to save about 40% log volume on this 25% of our log volume, right? Um, and what's important there is it's not about spending less money, right? What it's about is trying to take that data that is, um, you know, really important to you and trying to get more of it, right? And getting rid of all of the data that's less important to you, right? You're creating additional capacity to bring in more valuable logs, right? Because the reality is we all unfortunately have a budget. We all have some capacity that we're allowed to use. And so we have to, you know, a as custodians of, you know, the solution, uh, try to do that in the most efficient way possible. Um, so something else that I kind of want to talk a little bit about is uh, search parameters. Um, search parameters kind of is very related to dashboarding in a lot of sense. I feel like it came out of dashboarding, even though I've been fact-checked wrong on that. So uh, thank you for fact-checking me. Um, but essentially, it's a really nice way to, when you have similar types of searches across applications, or you know, a developer just wants, show me all the requests with this IP address or whatnot, they don't have to rewrite that query every single time, right? By just using a couple of parameters and making it really easy and accessible uh, for engineers, for QA. Um, you know, something that I'm very big on is that everyone at Sumo, if you're in R&D, you use Sumo, period. Right? If not, you're doing it wrong. And so you know, if, if it's too hard, we need to figure out how to make it easier, how to make it better. Uh, because there's so much value there. Um, and you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with dashboards. Um, and I'll show you kind of some of the interesting ones that have been really helpful to us. Um, and, and the last piece is something about automated responses. This is something that I don't know how many people there in the Sumo world are um, using that kind of functionality, but you know, we, you know, we have this concept that these logs right, are um, generated by machines, right? but then we expect people to consume them. Right? Um, and the reality is there's so many events going on that that's not really feasible in a lot of cases. Right? So I come from a very monitoring heavy background. Um, I'm a, sense, uh, a maintainer for Sensu, which is an open source monitoring framework. And something that I'm very big on is trying to do things in an automated fashion, trying to uh, uh, reduce alert fatigue and that kind of stuff, right? So um, let's talk about how we could do that with Sumo. So uh, just to give you an example, here's like an AWS uh, CloudTrail um, login uh, screen. I, apologies if you can't see it, but... Um, over here, logins, uh, multiple IPs. Uh, so we were actually able to use this uh, to find an internal user in our organization that was sharing their AWS credentials with another employee, including their MFA token, which should have been a really good indicator they shouldn't do that, right? But the only way we'd be able to find this is because um, we've got really good search capabilities with Sumo Logic, because uh, I don't know if you've ever used the AWS uh, CloudTrail like UI. It's pretty awful. Um, so, you know, really giving us that visibility into these very important security events, um, you know, so that, you know, from a compliance stance, from an audit perspective, right, we can go and say, hey, no, this user is this user, right? Um, they're not coming from multiple locations, all that kind of stuff. Um, so here's kind of, um, you know, we built a very custom uh, search for 
uh, privileged commands and did a lot of filtering out of what's expected standard operating procedures. Um, you know, uh, take for example even just that like tail one. I thought it was super interesting because when I wrote the regex, I'm like, okay, if you tail a million lines or less, it's not going to show up. Why is someone tailing more than a million lines? Like that's just interesting to me. May not be actionable, but it's interesting, right? So I reached out to the user and I was like, "What's going on, man?" Um, so you know, we had an interesting little discussion. I was like, "Oh, cool." But you know, I wouldn't have been able to have that conversation, um, you know, had I not had that visibility. And um, I, I want to take this to the next step, though, right? This is cool, right? But this requires me to evaluate it. It requires me to have context as to what the user is attempting to do, right? So this kind of ties into um, you know, something that I, I read over on uh, the Slack engineering blog a number of years ago talking about uh, distributed security event monitoring, right? And how um, every single person who's part of their engineering group is part of their security team. Well, how do you accomplish that, right? So um, their, their, their base concept there was, um, you know, build a tool that monitors some sort of state and logs, right? You know, for my organization, it might be, um, you know, auth log, AWS CloudTrail, et cetera, right? And these are very sensitive things uh, to your organization, right? But you don't always have enough context to know whether or not um, it's OK, right? Um, so after it detects something, um, it looks to um, kind of show you, um, you know, it reaches out to the user who actually ran the command via Slack, right? Instead of alerting the security team, right, where we're like, OK, cool, someone ran a random tail or, you know, MySQL dump, that might be OK, right? Uh, they might be doing something OK. But how do we know the difference between an account, uh, an account takeover uh, versus they're just running something that might be normal or somewhat normal for uh, operations? Um, so basically, essentially what I would like to do right, is say, OK, well, let's reach out to the user and say, hey, did you run this? Right? If they confirm they've run it, then we say, OK, cool. No need to alert the security team. We're just going to log it. We're going to acknowledge it. Um, otherwise, uh, if they either uh, say this wasn't me, or if they, uh, or if there's some kind of timeout, uh, we know, hey, this is something that the security team needs to take a look at and um, you know make a de make a determination as to what really needs to happen. Um, so, you know, uh, I kind of had this idea, and I it, it had been kind of ruminating in my mind for a while, and so I started some discussions with uh, Sumo Logic down at uh, Black Hat. And uh, you know, uh, I found out you know through some grapevines and whatnot, had some internal discussions about this uh, internal project that they had called Scattershot. Um, so I really wanted to, uh, you know, I was I was intrigued by it, and so I reached out for more information. And so now I'm going to let someone else finish my talk because I'm too lazy. So please welcome up uh, Kenneth Barry. Thanks. So uh, real quickly, I'm, my name's Kenneth Berry. I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Sumo Logic. I've been using Sumo for about five years as a de DevOps engineer at my last uh, position. I used Sumo Logic and had a great relationship with the company. And now I feel like I get to work at, uh, I'm, a, I'm a gamer kid who's now working at Nintendo. Um, I use Sumo Logic in my spare time um, for personal projects. Scattershot is actually, I feel like it's a personal project. Other people say it's not. They like it's an official project, but whatever. So, so um, Scattershot essentially utilized, so I, I, I was at KubeCon last year and someone gave a talk, I think the title was something like, over engineering your chatbot for fun and profit. And the idea was to use a chatbot as a systems integration point. It's really easy to get data to a chatbot, it's really easy to get chatbots to do whatever the heck you want, and, uh, and then because Slack is a convenient drop-off location, and chatbots are really easy in Slack. I decided to spin up a bot based on, um, I did not write the bot, but I did extend it. The bot that I use is called Slack Machine. It's a, like a Hue bot or something else, just a different one. And, uh, and the mechanism works something like this. I have a real-time alert, or not, that is triggering a search. Uh, I mean, a real-time alert off of a search that triggers a webhook that goes, right now I've, I've just got it going into a Slack channel that Hopefully no one pays attention to because there's just a bunch of data being dropped in there. My uh, scattershot uh, sits in the channel and whenever it sees special strings of data, it knows to pick those messages up and, and go and do stuff. 
So a webhook goes to Scattershot, Scattershot reaches out to a particular user for some sort of input from them. Um, and then the bot re reply, uh, re responds to the input from the users and finally can do other things and you can continue to iterate on, on that. So if you remember the, this one panel that he was talking about earlier, so let's talk about this scenario. So imagine that we've got a real-time search that's looking for uh, interesting commands running on the server. And whenever it happens, the Sumo Logic is alerting and sending a message to my Slack bot that contains the information that is needed to identify the rep. It's got the username, the supposed username, the uh, host that's involved, what was the command, when did it happen, and provides an, a way for them to essentially acknowledge their activity as like, hey, yeah, I'm, this is me, or to not acknowledge it, or, or as a third route, in uh, some amount of time, five minutes up here, uh, then the SOC will automatically be alerted to the activity. And if they say, that's not me, then the SOC can get this kind of a thing. Maybe it's automatically sent to whoever's on call, because I remember the bot can do whatever you want it to do, so if you want to go hit your pager duty to figure out who on the SOC is on call, then you could do that, or you could drop it in a generic channel and let people respond to it. And they'd be provided with actions like this. These are all capabilities that, uh, these are all things that you can do uh, in Slack. Some of this is purely Slack. Some of this is, uh, is uh, made possible via webhooks with Sumo Logic. But at the end of the day, whatever the functionality is, like this is a very specific use case, but whatever the functionality is, it is, trigger some external function to do something that is not inside our wheelhouse. Like, there, if we don't have buttons for everything you want to do. So if you want to do something that's outside of the wheelhouse, send it to an external tool with a webhook, build out that tooling, and if you need to drop data back into Sumo Logic, or in this case, these, these uh, what, what may not be clear is that these things right here can, uh, the lists, they're like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Well, let's use Sumo Logic as a source of data, a source of truth, so we can actually consult Sumo Logic through the Search Dub API to find out what's the name of the servers that I may want to be effect, uh, affected with whatever my further actions are. But this is, this is, in general, the idea of how to use an external integration to perform advanced uh, actions based on a webhook. Hey, Wolfgang. Can you hear me? All right, cool. Um, so I just kind of wanted to recap a little bit and kind of just be like, why, why did you waste your time listening to me, right? Um, you know, uh, really it's to, um, you know, really focus on uh, the business value, and that means extracting value from your logs, right? Um, and that means a whole bunch of different things. Um, really creating, you know, and documenting your standards and conventions, whether it's, again, doesn't matter whether it's your team, your organization, lots of business units, they all have their own crazy needs, but just document them. Um, and, you know, really, again, kind of making really efficient use of your data and your metadata to solve real-world problems and uh, extend past beyond the Sumo Logic boundaries. Like, do it, please. Like, this is awesome. Um, so... You know, I kind of wanted to just uh, open it up for some questions, answers, and I also wanted to um, announce that we are going to be open sourcing a repository with an example bot that you can then use as kind of like um, uh, to show you what you can do with it. But I, I just want to kind of reiterate on what Barry said, that this is a very generic solution to a very specific problem, and you can then take that to pretty much anything you want, you know, you saw their lockout server, that kind of stuff. It can be literally anything that you are willing to write code for. Um, so I think that's really cool. And um, if you have any questions, um, you know, that you don't feel comfortable, you know, discussing here, you can email me. Um, also, Doximity is always hiring, uh, so feel free to check out that site. And um, you know, I just want to open it up for questions and uh, you know, see if you guys, yeah. Probably Questions. Have, yeah, we have time for like maybe a question if there's any. Uh, anyone? By the way, look, you'll uh, we'll when we have the uh, I didn't finish in time. When I have the repo uh, ready, then we'll put the link in the dojo. So if you hang out in the dojo, you'll see a, an announcement from us.
Yeah, and I'm sure Kenneth and Ben will be hanging around after this um, talk if you guys have more questions. But yeah, thank you for attending.